Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns in their October 2015 auction that's coming up. And one pistol that they have here that is very scarce to see, and this is probably just about the best one in existence, is the Adler. It's an early German semi-auto pistol. This was originally patented in 1905. They were produced in 1906, 1907. Only about a hundred of them were ever made. Now, the Germans in the audience will probably already notice that uh, Adler is actually uh, the word for eagle. This was a sales and marketing thing. It didn't actually have anything to do with the gun itself or the designer, um, but it's most prominently marked on the side that it is, in theory, made by the Adler Waffenfabrik, uh, the Adler Weapons Company. The Eagle Weapons Company. You can see where the marketing on that is going. Um, however, that, that company was really just a, a marketing front. These were actually made by um, a manufacturing concern called Engelbrecht and Wolf. They made stuff. They made these pistols uh, for the guys who owned the patent. Now, the patent was originally filed by a fellow named Hausler. Uh, and then in 1905, a man named Max Hemsdorf uh, filed a second patent to improve the gun. And those improvements are what are embodied in the actual production pistol. So we don't know exactly what the arrangement was between these two guys. Most likely the original patenter uh, sold the design to this fellow who had come up with some ways to improve it and thought he could actually market it. They never did well on the market. Um, competition with other guns that were better and more successful kind of killed it. Um, you have to remember at this point, just because even if you make a good pistol, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take over the market because you don't have an internet in 1905. You have to figure out a way to make people aware of the pistol and convince them that it's actually better than their other options. And it has to be cost competitive with their other options. And Adler just didn't quite cut it. Now it is a straight blowback pistol. It's in a 7.25 millimeter Adler cartridge never used by anything else, it's proprietary. If anything, the ammunition is probably more rare than the guns today. Uh, it does have a nice detachable box magazine, held eight cartridges. Uh, the gun looks a bit awkward, but I actually find it pretty comfortable to handle. And it's got a pretty neat takedown method. So why don't we take a closer look at that? Start with some markings. On the right side of the gun here, we have the original patent for Hausler. Then we have the Adler Waffenfabrik, which is really kind of the brand name, the marketing name. And then below that uh, are the actual manufacturers, so Engelbrecht and Wolf. Both of the grips have this embossed design with an eagle, you know, Adler, eagle, and then an MHZ below it. That MHZ stands for the name of the guy who improved the patent, uh, Max Hermsdorf, and the Z is for Zella, which is the, the city where he resided. A lot of sources describe this as a, an uncomfortable or awkward gun to handle. I think it actually fits my hand extremely well. Um, it's got a nice grip angle to it, somewhat reminiscent of the Luger actually. And then this overhang really just kind of does a nice job of uh, fitting your hand. Now we have our bolt handle here. Very simple to open and close. And then this sort of acts like a buckhorn sight that you could use at uh, very close ranges if you had to. So our proper sights are little tiny things right there, but then if you just need a quick sight picture, you've got those big horns on the bolt handle that would work. One other neat feature here is this slot in the side of the receiver. That's actually so that you can tell if the gun is loaded or not. Uh, if I had a cartridge in there, you would be able to see the edge of the cartridge rim through that slot see the bolt reciprocating there. So, neat little feature. Safety is here on the side. Down is fire, up is safe. So if you are right-handed, that actually drops right under the thumb fairly nicely. It's small, but it goes the right direction and it's easy to get to. The magazine release is on the heel. Pull the magazine release forward and pull the magazine out. Again, works pretty intuitively, pretty easily. Held eight rounds. And this is a striker fired gun. So it's got a, the trigger pull on it is a little bit heavy, but not bad. Now, let's take a look at disassembly. All right, we have a little spring loaded catch there that I've pushed in and started the pin out. Now, there we go. 
This one's kind of tight. All right, once I pull this pin all the way out, the recoil spring is going to try to open this up. I'm going to do it kind of slowly. So there's our recoil spring inside. All right, now everything can come out. So there's our recoil spring and guide. You can see this just pivots open, holds everything in place. The bolt slides out the back. Pretty simple. Like I said, this is a simple blowback mechanism. And that's it. Now we can see clear out the barrel. We have a fixed ejector in there, magazines in there. The barrel would have been threaded in place and then screwed. I think that screw holds the barrel in. I'm not going to try and take the barrel out, though. All right, one other thing to point out. Right there, coming out the side of the receiver, that is actually the trigger, or the, the sear. When I pull the trigger, that reset pulls into the receiver. Now, when we look at the bolt, we have a firing pin, we have an extractor. Everything looks normal until you look at the back, and there's no end to the firing pin. Normally, we would expect something out here, or for a striker-fired pistol, we would expect to see something on the bottom of the bolt that uh, the sear catches. Well, on this case, the sear is actually in the side of the pistol. This is the firing pin. So when the bolt reciprocates, this gets caught and pulled backwards. And when you pull the trigger, then when you pull the trigger, it releases the firing pin to go forward and fire. That jeweling on the bolt is original. They're all done that way. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to the Adler. It's simple. It's not a bad design. It just uh, didn't quite cut it on the market. I can't say for sure if it was price or poor marketing or if they had problems with production. Um, there just isn't really any information. Like I said, only about 100 of these were ever made. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to have the nicest Adler in the world in your own collection, check out the link in the description text below. That'll take you to the James Julia catalog page on this pistol. You can take a look at their pictures, their provenance, their history, their description, etc. And either place a bid online or come up here to Maine and participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching.